Okay, so in example two and three, we were dealing with this first type of partial fraction, and that was when we had distinct linear factors in our denominator. These next two examples, example uh, four and five, are going to deal with the second situation that we might find in our denominator, and that is when we're dealing with repeated linear factors. So a repeated linear factor is just a case where we have one of our linear factors which has a power uh, which is greater than one. So we're looking for square cubed uh, quartic terms, usually uh, two or three in the, the examples that we're going to find. So it might just be one uh, factor which is repeated like that, or we might indeed have a product of terms where one of them is repeated, one of them is not, or that indeed there might be a, a, a uh, a power on both of them. So we'll have a look at a few different situations where there are repeated linear factors. Okay, so let's have a look at example four. Uh, we express some partial fractions 5x minus 16 over x minus 3 all squared. So we'll write out our rational function. Notice that as we're writing it out, it is a proper rational function. We've got an order one on the numerator, we've got an order of two on the denominator, so it is a proper rational function. We can execute this partial fractions uh, quite happily. So in previous examples with distinct linear factors, we separate the fractions out into all the individual linear factors. This one's slightly different. And what we do is, for each repeated linear factor, which in this case there only is one, uh, we're going to write a series of fractions with increasing powers of that factor. So the first fraction I'm going to write will have a denominator just of x minus 3, and the second fraction is going to have a denominator of x minus 3 squared. And I would keep going up until I got the actual power of my uh, denominator, so if it was to the power 4, I would have four fractions. First one would be x minus 3, second would be x minus 3 all squared, then x minus 3 to the power 3, then x minus 3 to the power 4. So there's one fraction for each increasing power of the denominator. So in this case, I've just got two. As normal, we'll put a default plus sign between them. And again, we still only have constant terms in the numerator, so we're still using the idea of the constant values, in this case I'll use A and B. So the real difference in this type is just how we set out our original uh, partial fractions. The rest of the process is really exactly the same. We're going to multiply through by the denominator, which in this case is x minus 3 squared. So the denominator will cancel out here and I'll be left with the numerator, 5x minus 16 is equal to, and I'll just put these up so that you can be really confident about what's going on. In the first fraction, we're multiplying through by x minus 3 all squared, so the denominator here cancels out with one of the x minus 3 um, multipliers here, so we're left with a times just x minus 3. In the second fraction, they actually the whole thing cancels out, you'll notice. Uh, which means we're just left with the value of b. So what we're going to do is we are going to pick our values for x, which make the equation a bit simpler. And in the way that we've been doing it, we look at factors and we try and pick a value for x, which is going to uh, make that uh, 0. So we can, as we have done before, we'll consider what happens when x equals 3. When x is 3, we've got 5 times 3 minus 16 on the left, and on the right-hand side, the a times x minus 3 goes to 0, because the 3 minus 3 is 0, plus b. So that becomes 15 minus 16 is equivalent to b. 15 minus 16 is negative 1, so we have our value b as being negative 1. However, if we have a look back at our equation, you'll notice that 
at this point here, there's no other factor terms to pick a value for x that's going to make it zero. There's nothing attached to multiplying the b term to make that disappear. So it's absolutely fine in this case to pick any value for x. It's always absolutely fine to pick any value for x and to substitute it in. But normally that what that would do, it would keep both a and b in our equation. The whole point about picking a particular value is that one of the constant terms disappears. But we don't have to do that anymore because we have a value for b. So what I'm going to do is pick a simple value for x. I could pick x as 1 uh, or indeed 0. So what I'm going to do is sometimes it's um, just as easy to let x equal 0 and see what happens. So when x is 0, what have I got on the left-hand side? 5x goes to 0, so I've just got negative 60 is equal to a times 0 minus 3 plus b. So simplifying that, I end up with an equation negative 16 equals negative 3a plus b. That would normally be no good for us, but we already know that b is negative 1. So we can substitute negative 1 in for b, add 1 to both sides, negative 15 is negative 3a, divide through by negative 3, and a becomes 5. So we have therefore our values for a and b. This time uh, we had to just improvise a little bit and pick an, a value for x which was just uh, a, a random or a, a value that we chose. And that's okay. Therefore, our original rational function, which was 5x minus 16 over x minus 3 squared, is going to be written as 1 fraction a over x minus 3. Like that. x minus 3. Our second fraction is going to be divided by x minus 3 squared. Uh, let's just remind ourselves, we found that a was 5. We found that b was negative 1. So again, we're going to have a wee issue with our, uh, our sign here. If a is 5, that was a over x minus 3 becomes 5 over x minus 3 plus negative 1 over x minus 3 squared. I'll just make that a minus and 1 over x minus 3 all squared. And that's how we deal with our repeated linear factor. So in example 5, we'll have a look at uh, a, a rational function that has actually a kind of product of terms in the denominator, which just adds a little bit of interest to it, but we can practice that at the moment.